Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on creating a box plot using Microsoft Excel. In column A of this worksheet, I have 50 random values that were generated to follow a normal distribution. And you can see here in column D, I have labels, minimum, quartile one, median, quartile three, and maximum. Those corresponding values the differences in this case between quartile one and the minimum and here quartile three and the maximum and then I have the box plot that represents the data in column A. So moving over to sheet two I have the uh, these same data and all the labels but no values and of course I do not have the box plot so I'm going to show you how to build this starting with just the data and the labels. So first we need to generate the minimum quartile 1, median quartile 3, and maximum values for column A, for the 50 values in column A. And there is a minimum function, min, in Excel and a maximum, max, and a median which is median, but we don't need to use those. We just need one function. We just need to change the final argument in that function for each of these five values. And that is the quartile.inc function. So I'll start with that, equal sign, quartile, inc. Be aware there's also an exc. So there's an inclusive and an exclusive version of the quartile function. We want the inclusive version. You see it's asking for an array and then quartile. So the array is going to be all the values in column A. And once I'm done selecting the range, I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference. And then you can see I have five choices, 0 through 4 for the final argument for quartile.inc. And you see zero is minimum value. So I type in zero, click enter. Then I have the minimum value for this variable. And I'm gonna autofill this all the way down. And I'm just gonna change the final argument, the second argument, from zero to one. That's the first quartile or the 25th percentile for Q1. For the median, I'm going to change the 0 to 2, which is median value, which is the 50th percentile. For quartile 3, I'm going to change it to 3, which is the third quartile, or 75th percentile. And for the maximum value, I'm going to change the 0 to 4. So the same function generated all the values, just that second argument is different for each one. Then next to the minimum value and next to the maximum value, I want the difference between the minimum and quartile 1 up here and the difference between the maximum and quartile 3 down here. So that formula is fairly straightforward. Equal sign and then 43 minus 28 at 15. And down here, equal sign and 79 minus 56 or 23. So these values are all I'm going to need to generate the box plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight Q1, quartile 1, down to the value 56 here, which is the value for quartile 3. I'm going to highlight here. Go to Insert, and I'm going to insert a column chart, bar chart. And this is what it will look like by default. I'm going to go into Select Data, and I'm going to switch Row and Column. So then I'm going to select over here, and right-click and Format Data Series. And you can see here for Series Overlap, you have Separated and Overlapped. I'm going to make this 100% overlapped. So this is what it should look like at this point. This value 1 down here, I can delete that. 
and I can also remove the vertical axis major grid lines. So format grid lines and no line and close. Then I'm going to select the green rectangle and I'm going to go to select data. And what you see here, I have quartile one, median, and quartile three. I'm going to move quartile one to the bottom and median to the middle and click OK. And you can see now the three colors are all visible here. For this box plot to look as it's supposed to, we're not going to want this blue rectangle to be visible. So we're going to go here and select that and format data series, go to fill, and we need to use a solid fill of white. So if I go to no fill, you see it just, you just see the color behind it, which is red. So I need to go to solid fill and change this to white. So you can see now we have the rectangle that we would expect to see in a box plot like this. Next, I want to add in the whiskers. If I go back here to sheet one, the whiskers are the lines, the vertical lines below and above the main rectangle there. So on sheet two here, up where it says chart tools, I want to select layout, then error bars, and this drop down you can see there's uh, none and then three different types of error bars I can add, but I want the more error bars options. And first it's going to come up with this dialog that says add error bars based on series. First I'm going to select quartile one, Q1, and click OK. So from this dialog you can see under vertical error bars I want the one uh, labeled minus and I want to leave the cap, the end style as cap. And then for the error amount, I want to move all the way down to custom and specify value. And I'm going to delete what's in the negative error value. By default, I'm just going to delete that and go to the worksheet. And in this case, I'm going to select the difference between quartile one and the minimum, which I've already calculated here in F4 as 15. Click OK. And you see it placed the whisker on the box plot. I'll close that out. And now I want to add in the whisker above the rectangle. So I go to error bars, more error bar options again. And this time when this dialog comes up to add error bars based on series, I'm going to select quartile 3, Q3, and I click OK. And this time I want to, the direction will be plus, so I want to select plus. Of course, leave the cap, and under custom, specify value, I'm going to delete the contents of positive error value, and select 23, which is the difference between the maximum value and quartile 3, and click OK. I'll close this, and you can see now I have the upper whisker and the lower whisker both in place. They're not particularly easy to see, so I'm going to right-click on here and go to Format Error Bars, and then go to Line Style, and by default it's 0.75 point. I'm going to move that to 2 point. And I'll do the same thing for the lower whisker. Format error bars, line style, move it to two point. So now it is easier to see those whiskers. And then I'm going to delete the legend here on the right. And I'll resize the graph to take up a little bit more of the worksheet. And there is the completed box plot representing the data in column A.
I hope you found this video on creating a box plot using Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.